Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to saxophonist Mindy Abair, fresh off her American Idol performances alongside Paul McDonald and Casey Abrams. Stick around, this girl can wail. The show is brought to you today by Audible. Audible is offering Mr. Media listeners a free audiobook download and a 14-day trial offer to give you a chance to check out their very cool service. I love listening to books on tape. If you've never tried it before, actors or sometimes the authors themselves read to you. It's great for the commute, the beach, or even unwinding before bed. You can choose a free audiobook from Audible's enormous library of titles, including today's top American Idol-related bestsellers, such as A Hell of a High Note, Surviving Life, Love, and American Idol by Cara Dioguardi, or Learning to Sing, Hearing the Music in Your Life by Clay Aiken, or even Does the Noise in My Head Bother You by Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. You can even download Will Eisner, A Spirited Life, the biography of the comic book and graphic novel legend, which I wrote and will read to you personally. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience that includes Clarence Big Man Clemens, David Sanborn, and the ghosts of Charlie Parker and John Coltrane in the new new media capital of the world and birthplace of Mindy Abair, St. Petersburg, Florida. Not everyone took saxophone player Mindy Abair's path to being a guest on Mr. Media. Most get booked through a publicist, quite honestly. I get a note or a phone call saying, hey, have you ever heard of... you know, something like that. And I consider each one carefully and invite only the men and women who strike a real chord with me. But in Mindy's case, I received an email from someone whom I trust without question, her aunt, Becky James. <laughs> Becky has been transcribing audio interviews for me for the last two decades. She probably knows things about me from those recordings that even my wife doesn't, and bless her, she'll take those stories to the grave. Anyway, one day she sent a note saying, you should have my niece, Mindy, on your show. She's a saxophone player. Uh, you know, how do you handle that? I don't know. But then I did a little homework. Mindy Abair is an outstanding saxophone player, one of the most talented individuals of her generation, on her instrument. And if you don't want to believe me, or Aunt Becky, you should have seen her recent appearances on American Idol, first blowing away the audience and the judges alongside contestant Paul McDonald on Bob Seger's Old Time Rock and Roll. And she returned a few weeks later to accompany another singer on the show, Casey Abrams. Oh, and she was just named Best International Instrumentalist at the Wave Awards in Toronto. And another thing, Mindy was featured on the front page of Yahoo Music as their lead story the day after the first American Idol feature. By the end of the day, the mystery saxophonist had received three million click-throughs. That's the story. Now what can I say? Aunt Becky knows her saxophone stuff. Mindy Abair, welcome to Mr. Media. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. My Aunt Becky is now my new publicist. <laughs> she did a pretty have to have her hook me up with more. <laughs> It'd be interesting to find out who else she knows now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so we were talking right before the show started. Uh, you're from St. Petersburg, uh, where, where I am, where the show is, where Aunt Becky originally was. And I didn't realize, I'm embarrassed to find out, you were here a couple weeks ago and you did the town red. I I came home. It was so great to be home. I had... One day off, and I spent it at the beach with, you know, me and the seagulls and trying to get a tan. It was great. Um, but, yeah, I, I did a lot. Played the national anthem for the Rays game, which we won. I love that. When you play the national anthem for, you know, your home team, you want them to win. You want to be, you know, a good luck charm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we did a bunch of, you know, TV. Charlie Belcher has always been great to me. He had me on Fox 13 and... Ted Webb's uh, an old friend of my dad's from way back in the day, and so I went on Jack and Ted in the morning and yeah, did a bunch of stuff. It was great. Oh, boy, and that makes me feel old. Jack and Ted are old friends of mine, and I hadn't thought about that it would be a whole other generation that would be saying that about their day. Okay, never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> wow. 
it's always it's it's just nice to be home you know nice to bring my band home and you know play for my dad's friends my friends everything you that, know that would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool and uh it's nice it's nice that you get that respect uh being a you know a local girl being able to come home and uh and you're in good you're in good company we just read today that uh Another uh, St. Pete talent, uh, actor Patrick Wilson, just landed a show on CBS today. So uh, it's a good day for the St. Petersburg kids. It is. You know, it's it's funny. St. Pete wasn't known as the mecca of art and music or film, but uh, I think we, we're changing that perception. You know, it's, uh, it's cool. The new Dolly Museum is so spectacular and... I don't know. We've got Ruth Eckerd Hall and Capitol Theater and a lot of great music venues that are attracting a lot of people. And, and I don't know, a lot of very talented people, whether actors or musicians, are coming out of there. So I'm happy to be in really good company. Absolutely. Honestly. Oh, I should mention, I just thought of another one. Uh, Monica Raymond, who's been on uh, Fox's uh, Lie to Me the last three seasons. Another another St. Petersburg yeah. talent. And one of my friend's daughters, she's, she just turned 16. She just got an ABC show. Um, that isn't on yet. They just did a pilot. So she's born and raised in St. Petersburg. And gosh, 16 years old, she's going to be on ABC on a new show. So a lot of nice talent coming out. Well, we'll have to, you'll have to connect me with her to get her on in the fall to promote yeah. her show. Lauren Erion, she's great. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's come back to talk about uh, what's happening with you. Uh, a saxophone player on American Idol. What is the world coming to? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was, you know, it was a lot of fun to get the call for sure. And uh, they've had a lot of things on American Idol over the years. But I have to say, I've watched it pretty religiously and I've never seen a sax solo. Yeah. So I don't know. I might be the first sax solo. Maybe I missed one, but I, I was very honored to get the call. Well, my wife seemed to recall, uh, I guess, one of the guys maybe having a harpist on, but. Uh... Couldn't couldn't really recall a saxophone player. And uh, now, uh, this was were you at all leery of of doing American Idol? Uh, or and and this came about. I think I read Don Waz had something to do with it. Yeah, Don Waz is such an amazing producer, amazing music maker. You know, plays, writes, produces. Uh, I've always been just a huge fan. And we had talked about him producing my last record. Mm -hmm. Uh, but his schedule was crazy, so it didn't work out in in the time frame that we had hoped, um, because he was doing the Rolling Stones and all these, you know, all these bands that paid a lot more than than me. Uh, but what was cool was when he started doing American Idol and doing the tracks for the contestants on there. They ended up doing Old Time Rock and Roll, which has a very very famous sax solo. So he ended up calling me and just saying, hey, would you like to, you know, would you like to do the show and, you know, play on the track? And so, yeah, I said, absolutely. And uh, any interesting stories to tell about, oh, I don't know, the rehearsal? <laughs> I could see you read the Yahoo story, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, my first time on American Idol was, was a bit of a shock. Um, I walked in to do rehearsal, you know, because they do a, a, a dress rehearsal and then the show. And, uh, and it's all live, so, you know, you, you kind of got to go with it. But the producer walked up, and she took me by the shoulders, and she goes, I know exactly what we're doing. I know exactly what we're going to do. And I said, oh, okay, because all I knew was I was, you know, doing the sax solo that I had uh, recorded on the record live. And... Uh, she goes, I'm going to dress you up just like Tom Cruise. This song, it's movie week. Every song is from a movie. You are going to be Tom Cruise. We're going to put the Ray-Ban glasses on you. You're going to be in men's underwear. You're going to be in a big white shirt. You're going to slide in in white socks, and it's going to be amazing. I, I was horrified. <laughs> I mean, you're kidding me. I can't, I can't play saxophone in men's underwear and... I'm definitely not going in front of 26 million people sliding in on socks. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, this is not, you've got the wrong girl. So she's just, no, you've got to try it. You've got to try it. I've got the stylists to, 
you know, get all the stuff and just put it on, do it for dress rehearsal. And I mean, how, you know, this is the producer for American Idol. You don't just tell them no, you know, it's like I wanted to be a good sport about it, but yet I was horrified to even think about, you know, going out there and playing in my underwear in front of the judges and the audience and, and everyone, you know. So I said yes. I, I just said, okay, I'll do it for dress rehearsal, but I got no guarantees for the show. What I'm really hoping is that someone will see this and just say, there's no way. So I got in the whole get up and I went backstage, you know, we were starting the dress rehearsal and almost every one of the contestants, you know, the finalists were back there and they just looked at me and went, oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 they're not making you do that, are they? Oh, God. And, you know, Paul McDonald was in his just cool suit. I don't know if, if you saw it, I but did. he had these great, just sparkly, cool Nash Vegas suits. And he just looked at me, he goes, you are not wearing that. They are not making you do that, are they? And I said, I'm doing it for dress rehearsal, and hopefully someone higher up in the food chain will see it and just go, no, 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 this is an awful idea. So I went out, played my heart out in my underwear. Well, not my underwear, guy underwear. It's awful. <laughs> and... uh Thank goodness, about five minutes later, I got the word from the producers saying, you can put on your real clothes again. <laughs> so I did the show in my clothes, which is so much better than trying to look like Tom Cruise. Well, now, you know, it's been a while since I saw the movie. Was, was it boxers or briefs? Um, it was tidy whities That's what I thought. I was thinking it was briefs, yeah. Yeah, yeah they gave me like little tidy whities that came down the leg a little bit. They were awful. And was, I've were worn the, underwear in my life. I, I don't want to do it in front of 26 million people. Were the judges there for dress? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, they were sitting in front of me, which I've known Randy Jackson for years. I thought his eyes were going to pop out of his head. <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I've got a long history of, uh, a jazz career and, you know, making records and uh, being respectable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really in my nature to go out in underwear. <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, it was, was it's a good story to tell the grandchildren. And Stephen and Jennifer didn't have anything to say about it? Uh, you know what? They don't comment on the... They don't comment on the, the dress rehearsal. They just kind of watch. Steven Tyler had nothing to say about a saxophone player coming out in uh, men's underwear. I, I, I'm astonished. Uh, not that I heard. Okay. Not that I heard. Not for my ears. It was not until I actually came out in my regular clothes that, that he asked who I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think that had something to do about the fact that he had seen me in underwear uh, only a few hours earlier. I'm not sure. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Uh, were you wearing your your ring at the time? My wedding ring? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Just, I was just curious. Uh, <laughs> well, now that uh, now that I've completely upset uh, Aunt Becky by talking to you about wearing underwear on uh, American Idol. Uh, <laughs> no, hanging out. Don't get that idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's uh, let's take a quick break. Still plenty to talk about. Um, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching uh, the Mr. Media interview with saxophonist Mindy Abair, and we will be right back. 